Hi kids, today I'm going to be telling you a story. I'm going to talk to you about a girl that was almost named Mildred. When Mil Mildred was born into a religious Catholic family, and the Bible tells us that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And at the age of two, a day after her second birthday, the enemy of our souls came and tried to take her out of this world. She had gone to bed that night and the babysitter went in to check on her and her face was swollen up to here. So she was rushed to the hospital and it turned out a simple eye infection had become a very, you know, bad bacterial dangerous and had burst and gone into her bloodstream and she had gone septic and she was in the hospital for a month and a half hovering between life and death. Her, um, when she came out, she came out with half her weight. She had to learn how to walk again, feed herself again. She um, was, the doctors told um, the parents that Mildred would probably never get past the age of 10 in terms of being able to do things. Um, so she lived under this cloud of awful expectation. She had a relative who was not a nice man. He was um, her grandfather and he took advantage of that diagnosis and he began to treat Mildred very poorly from about the age of two to about nine, ten, till Mildred could walk away from him. She couldn't tell anybody about, you know, how mean her grandpa was because her mom was mean too. <laughs> her mom um, was just not able to show love and some of Mildred's early memories are kind of sad, being put to bed at five o'clock um, without dinner. And she would holler down and say, Mom, I'm hungry. And her mom would say, too bad, Mildred, too bad. And one time she broke her mom's antique butter dish. She felt really bad about it, but she never even got to say she felt bad about it because her mom said to her, you know, you have no idea how much I hate you and I wish you'd never been born. Ooh, those are hard words for a four, five, or six-year-old little girl to hear. What did Mildred do? How did she survive? Well, she lived outdoors a lot. She um, learned to love the outdoors. She would leave after breakfast and not come home until dinner time at five, and that was okay because her mom didn't want to see her. She, um, she would do this thing at night. I kind of call it prophetic play when Mildred was telling me about it. She would take her stuffed animals and her dolls and she would pretend that she was a, a mom in the woods and she would hear these little crying children. They'd come one at a time and they'd say, help me, help me. I don't have a mom who knows how to take care of me or love me. And Mildred would say, oh, you don't come and live with me. I'll take care of you, I'll love you. And she would put them around her bed and make a circle. And in that circle, she said she felt really safe. She would do that at night. The other thing that she did to survive was she made her teachers her surrogate moms. Her teachers had no idea that they became like the mother she wanted <laughs> every year. And when everybody else was happy on the last day of school, Mildred would try not to cry all the way home in the, on the bus because she was saying goodbye to her mom that year. So the thing is that God put good people in Mildred's life and, um, Along the way, there was one baby, another babysitter who she was walking with her one time, and she said, Mildred, lift up your head. Because Mildred always would look down like this. And she said, Mildred, lift up your head. And she said, you need to look up. You're beautiful. And Mildred said, what? Because Mildred felt really ugly. She says, you're really beautiful, you know. And I, re I remember Mildred telling me the story that she went home that day, and she looked in the mirror. She looked to the right. She looked to the left. She thought, well, I guess I'm not so ugly. People make a difference, you know? And there was a, a friend that invited her over to her house in second grade. And this friend, um, mom was really loving and kind and Mildred was fascinated. She studied this, this mom. She watched, she watched her make cookies with her friends and she noted that there were braided rugs everywhere and there was just a good feeling at this house. Mildred just didn't want to leave, but she did, and actually she was so excited about her visit there that she was never allowed to go back. In fact, she never was allowed to go to anybody's house after that. Uh, so Mildred grew up, and um, she got to be older without the Lord, and she became a person that she did not respect. And there was a friend in Mildred's life who kept inviting her to church and didn't give up for a year and a half. 
Mildred would always say no for a year and a half. Mildred, we're having a Bible study. Would you like to come? Definitely not. Mildred, we're having a Thanksgiving dinner. Would you like to come? Uh, no. Mildred, we're having pizza night. Uh, no. No. No, thank you. But one day Mildred said yes. And when she did, the people of that church began to pray for Mildred. And within two months, within two months, Mildred gave her heart and life to the Lord. And I'm sharing this story with you because... I'm Mildred. No, I'm not Mildred. Thank heavens my parents didn't name me Mildred. They may name me Nancy. And I am so thankful to know Jesus. And I'm thankful for the people that spoke into my life. And I want to share the scripture for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So kids, we have this great struggle when we're here on earth. We have the Lord who wants us. We have the devil who's trying to get us or keep us, but God is greater and God, God's love is greater. And so thank you for listening to my story. Bye-bye.